Hi all, so I'm Giles, I'm from Tech UK. Uh, for those people who don't know about Tech UK, we are the trade body in the UK for the tech industry, representing about a thousand tech companies from the very, very largest, such as you know, BTs and also the kind of Googles and Vodafones of this world, right through to kind of a large body of smaller businesses, startup businesses, scale up businesses in the sector. So representing the kind of the whole reach of, uh, of what's available within the UK. And it's worth saying that you know, the UK has traditionally been the European leader in, in tech, and I suspect, regardless of Brexit, we'll continue to have a very strong role in kind of guiding European-wide tech policy, if not directly EU, uh, EU policy. So on data protection, I think a lot of the kind of the key points have already been made in some ways. Uh, but for us, I think the real challenge is the real challenge at the beginning of this process was explaining to UK government just how important data flows were. I think there was a kind of a sense of, oh yes, that's something which impacts on tech, but actually is you know, a relatively minor nuance point and something that will be kind of sorted out in the context of a trade deal and those kind of things. I think very quickly the work kind of was done to show the government just why this is so important. And even now, it's still kind of you're still finding companies in other sectors going, oh, that actually affects us. Funnily enough, just getting off the train um, of the Eurostar this morning, I bumped into someone from the freight transport industry who was saying that one of their biggest members had just realised that the big investment they've made in a data centre uh, in, in Holland to do a lot of their data across Europe, it's something like, oh, that will be impacted on by data, so actually we need to start rolling data into our Brexit planning. So I think there is a lot of learning still to be done. The good thing, I think, from... UK perspective is the government has very quickly understood that this is for the second phase of negotiations a day one issue this is something which is fundamentally important and are actively taking action uh, to kind of get themselves ready so you've heard already that the government has brought through the data protection bill in the UK which is currently um, being discussed in the House of Lords and that puts in place the provisions of GDPR and the exemptions to fully implement GDPR on schedule with the rest of the EU, but also crucially goes a little bit further than just GDPR. So for example, around uh, the national security questions, which will be integral to the adequacy questions, there is a section of the bill which looks at making sure that national security in the UK has to meet international data protection standards, particularly the European Data Convention 108. I think that's a really important recognition of the UK that more needs to be done than just GDPR. I think there is, it's fair to say, a challenge in making sure that government clearly communicates that they're doing more and that they understand there will probably be more to do as the negotiations get on. I think there's a tendency to go, if we do all the things we have said we'll do, then we should be fine. And actually, speaking to colleagues from America and other elsewhere, the recognition of how complex this process could be if we go for an adequacy process is something which I think is still, still being unpicked at UK government level. Uh, I think particularly understanding just how complicated it is to do what are effectively kind of a trade-based negotiation in the context of a national security question. So how do you ensure that the EU Commission can look at the things they need to look at without compromising national security and vice versa? There's also the sense to which the UK needs to set out its own adequacy regime so that we can declare the EU uh, adequate as well, and that's something that has to happen in order to ensure that, in order to that, ensure that mutual recognition of data is able to continue, and the free flow of data across both borders can happen. So, what are the challenges that kind of we really face? I think kind of the real big one will be that national security question, and I think the concern about the government, the UK government's future partnership paper is that it understands adequacy is possibly the right mechanism, but talks about some other mechanisms which may be, uh, may be uh, worth looking at, particularly how we can use Article 218 of the, of the treaty to kind of do this bespoke, in a bespoke way, different to adequacy. I think what would be really helpful from a business point of view is to understand the Commission's view of that, maybe we're kind of early on in the, in the kind of second phase of negotiations and see whether actually that is a strong legal basis for creating a a data flows regime. If it's not, I think it's important for the UK government to very quickly understand that adequacy is the formal process set out and to kind of do all the things that needed to be done to, to secure that. I think the final point I'll just say is that this has to start as soon as humanly possible. We at Tech UK actually were pushing for this to become part a 
fifth part of the first round of negotiations because it is a divorce question as much as it is a a future partnership question. I think that's reflected in the fact that the Commission put out its own paper on data flows, but just looking at the separation issues. That hasn't quite happened, but I think the key will be immediately after the second phase of negotiations start, this becomes a key integral separate working group within the discussions themselves. We are looking therefore very intently at the December Council meeting. I think government recognises how important uh, December Council meeting will be to kind of getting over this hurdle, getting into these negotiations. And, you know, these things do take time. I think the shortest adequacy agreement ever conducted took 18 months with Argentina. Yes, we start from a better place. Yes, there's a better understanding between regulators of how this works, but there will be a lot of work to do. I think the other side of this, and kind of the, the uh, UK's perspective, is the importance of the Information Commission at the UK's Data Protection Authority being involved in this process. Speaking to a lot of co colleagues across Europe, I think there's an understanding that actually, because the U UK has been the big kind of leader in European tech, that the Information Commission in the UK has a lot of the expertise. And it would be a shame in some ways if the if the processes ended up excluding that expertise from being able to be, ben be a benefit to the whole of the EU and that the, informa the, the Information Commissioner can continue to play that active role in shaping some of the policies which certainly kind of reflect the pro-business agenda for data protection uh, that I think you know, many of us, many businesses want to see. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs>